Welcome to Easy Learning. This is our second video in this series. Last video we saw what is Tally and what are the new features available in Tally Prime and how to download and install Tally Prime. Now in this video we are going to focus on basic accounting concept. Once we are thorough in basic accounting concept then learning Tally is easy and interesting one for us. That's why we are seeing in the beginning of this series. There is no limitation for ta learning tally. Whoever interested can watch this video. Accounting transactions are classified into four categories. Asset, liability, income and expense. Whatever the transaction happens, that is within the one of the category. Now we are going to see each category individually. First, let me see about assets. Asset means resource which are owned or controlled by a company. The assets are classified into two types. One is tangible asset and the another is intangible asset. The tangible asset means the asset which are in the physical form. Intangible assets means the assets which are in non-physical form. Examples for tangible assets are a company owned land, building, cash, machineries, furnitures and stock which are available in the globe. The examples for intangible assets are copyrights, patents, investments and goodwill. First, let me see copyright. Copyright is actually an intellectual property. It may be a literary work or maybe a music or maybe a software etc. Next, patent. Patent is also an intellectual property but it may be their invention or maybe their discovery or maybe their concept etc. Next investment. Investment means income earned by means of deposit money in bank and invest money in other company shares. Finally, let me see about goodwill. For example, suppose company X purchase company Y with a price higher than their fair market value. Why they purchase with such a higher price? This is because of their company Y's reputation or based on their brand value or based on their solid customer value etc. This higher price is called goodwill. Simply goodwill means the amount difference between purchase price and fair market price. Next we see about liabilities with some examples. First loan from bank. Sometimes we receive money from bank with the interest for our business development. Then that amount is become a liability to a company. Next, sometime we receive or purchase raw material for our factory use and actually we consume the raw materials we purchased but payment is not yet made. Then the amount is become a liability to a company. Next, outstanding expense. This means sometime we are running our office in a rented building then it is our responsibility to make payment on every month. Suppose we are not ma making payment on time, then that amount is become a liability to a company that is called outstanding expense. Next, bank overdraft. This means, suppose our bank balance is 50,000. Perhaps we are issuing a check for the amount of 51,000. The bank has passed the check and collect the balance amount with the interest on our next transaction. That is, uh, that is also a liability to a company. In this case, please note that bankers are all not provide such a facility to everyone. For some customers having current account based on the reputation and based on the security provided to the bank. Finally, let me see about income and expense. First income. In business, income means Amount received from your customer for the goods or service that you have sold to them. This income is classified into two types. One is direct income and another is indirect income. The direct income means the income received is directly related to your core business. And indirect income is the income received is not directly related to your core business. For example, let us assume a construction business. Selling of flat is the core business. 
suppose they receive amount from customer for selling a plant that is a income direct income on the other hand once the construction company complete their project finally they have lot of waste items like iron rod broken bricks copper wires finally they sell to someone with some profit that is also an income but that income is not directly related to your core business that is called indirect income next let us see about expense the expense also expense means for running a business it is necessary for everyone to spend some amount that expense is also classified into two types one is direct expense and another one is indirect expense the direct expense means the income the sorry expense which is directly related to your core business is called direct expense on the other hand the expense which is not directly related to your core business is called indirect example indirect expense let us assume construction company once again in a construction company we are all aware selling a flat is the core business for the construction flat it is necessary for them to purchase iron rod bricks river sand etc that is directly related with the core business so the expense we spending for spending for purchase of raw material is a direct expense on the other hand it is necessary for a company to maintain a office sometimes they may run the office in a rented building it is necessary for them to pay rent on monthly basis and pay salary the for staffs those who are working in that office it necessary for them to spend money for mobile charges etc etc that are all indirect expense now i hope now you are all got some knowledge about asset liability income and expense now let me see how assets liabilities income and expenses are defined in tally first let me see about assets and liability in tally assets and liabilities are further classified into nine primary group and 13 sub group now let us see one by one first capital account it is a primary group whoever it is if they want to start a business or an industry or a retail shop it is necessary for them to invest money that investment is called capital amount next resource and surplus it is a sub group to a capital account sometime the company decided to keep aside some portion of cumulative profit to meet their unpredicted expenses or to purchase new asset to strengthening their business or to pay dividend to the shareholders this money is under resource and surplus subgroup next current asset it is a primary group the asset which is in the form of cash or equivalent to cash or anything which can be converted into cash quickly the current asset has three subgroups let me see one by one first bank account balance which is available in the company holding banks and bank related transaction or comes under this group next cash in hand even though nowadays most of the cash transaction are through bank in a digital way it is necessary for every company to keep some cash physically to meet the day to day expenses this cash transaction are comes under this subgroup next loans and advances it means sometime we paid money in advance to our employees who are working with us to meet their urgent need and direct the amount on monthly installment such a type of transactions are comes under this head next stock in hand stock which are available in our godown next is sundry debt sometimes our customers received goods from us on credit payment basis and payment is not yet made such amount is shown on the balance sheet on the left, left side or debit side that means on debit side under the sundry debt group next deposit some deposits like security deposit paid by us it means suppose we are running in a, our office in a rented building initially we deposit some amount to the landlord he will return back while we are leaving the building such amounts are shown in the deposit account deposit sub group next current liability current liability means company's debt or obligation which are to be paid within a short period 
Now let us see the subgroups under current liability one by one. First, duty and taxes. Statutory dues or tax to be paid are under this group. Next, provision. In a business, the owner periodically review their monthly income and expense regularly to know the status of their financial position. Unless incorporating all the transaction, they won't get the expected result. For example, for every month, it is necessary for them to pay electricity charges or telephone bills, etc. But they don't know the electricity charges on the month itself because they will get the receipt only on the next month. In such type of situation, they account the charges based on the last month as a provision entry and reverse the same once they received the receipt of the actual charges. Next, sundry creditor. Sometime we received goods or service from our creditor on credit basis and payment is yet to be made. Next, fixed asset. It is a primary group. The company owned land, building, machineries and furniture are comes under this group. Next, investment. Investment, it is also a primary group. Investment means income earned by means of deposit money in bank and you invest money in other company shares. Next, loan liability. It is a primary group. It has three subgroups. Now, let me see one by one. Bank overdraft. Sometimes we issue check more money than in our account. The bankers spot the check and collect the deficit amount on the next transaction with interest. Such adept is under this group. Next is secured loan. For our business development, sometimes we received a loan from bank or any other financial institution by pledged our company asset. It is called secured loan. Next, unsecured loan. Without any collateral based on our reputation on our company credit worthiness we received a loan from some financial institution or called unsecured loan next is suspense account it is a primary group suspense account is a temporary account sometime we received money from our customer by bank transfer and immediately we may not identify the amount is received from whom till we determine from whom we keep the amount in suspend account next miscellaneous Expense asset. It is a primary group. Any expense incurred during at the time of formation of a new business. Generally, such a type of expenses are shown on the asset side of the balance sheet and should be written off over a period of time. Next, branch and division. It is a primary group. If a company have more than one affiliates, system concern or subsidiaries, the transaction related to the above or comes under this primary group. Now, let me see another six primary groups related with the income and expense one by one. First, purchase and sales. Both are primary groups. First, purchase. In a business, the transaction related with the purchasing of goods or service comes under this group. Next, sales. In a business, transaction related with the selling of our goods or service or comes under this group. Then let us see about direct income and indirect income. First, let us see about direct income. Direct income means the amount received from our customer for selling of goods which is related with the core business. Example, in a construction company, selling of flat is the core business. The amount received by selling of flat is a direct income. Next, indirect income. The amount received, but service or goods are not related with our core business. Example, in a construction company, after completing the project, they are having a lot of waste items like iron rod, broken bricks, etc. The income received by selling of such goods are called indirect income. Next, let us see about direct expense and indirect expense. First, direct expense. The expense incurred in the business are directly associated with the cost object. Example, in a manufacturing industry, purchasing a raw material is a direct expense. Next, indirect expense. The expense incurred in a business not associated with the cost object. Example, in a manufacturing industry, they are, it is necessary for them to run an office. Office electricity charges, the salary paid to their employees, those who are working on the office, are all examples for indirect expense because these expenses are not associated with the cost object. 
there are two types of accounting concept one is single entry system and another one is double entry system first let me see about single entry system in a single entry system there is only one entry for each transaction the entry contains transaction gate description and transaction value the value is on either debit side or credit side based on the nature of transaction this type of method is not a complete accounting system because by this method it is not possible or it's to find whether our business is running in profit or loss and difficult to find item stock and difficult to find credit or debit or balance etc in double entry system in double entry system each entry has two transactions one is on the debit side and another one is on the credit side both the debit side total and credit side totals are always equal for example suppose we purchase a goods from mr x on credit basis the entry details contain purchased goods value and quantity on the one side and purchased from whom and amount to be paid on the other side with the due date in this method it is possible for us to view our business is running in profit or loss and credit or debt or balance at any time etc in tally they are following double entry accounting concept in this video i explain basic accounting concept required to operate tally if you are like this video please share and subscribe